Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please uh, let me know if you all can hear me clearly and see my screen. Inshallah, we can get started now. Alhamdulillah, uh, alhamdulillah, <clears throat> alhamdulillah. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evil and our wrongdoing. He whom Allah guides, no one can misguide, and he whom Allah misguides, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd and final messenger. Sending the rood upon our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa innaka hamidun mujid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa innaka hamidun mujid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you all to our second webinar uh, from the Startup Council regarding uh, in entrepreneurship or and Islam, how, how it works together. So inshallah, let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to give a, a, a take a couple of minutes here and give a brief introduction of mine. My name is Daoud Ahmed. I am uh, one of the co-founder of ALMPG and the Startup Council. I currently live in uh, Los Angeles, California, working for a healthcare client. I have close to 15 plus years of experience in business and IT, alhamdulillah, and I'm now I get uh, into entrepreneurship. So alhamdulillah, uh, <clears throat> that's a little bit about me. So let's get started. So why and for whom is this webinar for? You know, we, we were uh, discussing it among our team, you know, what kind of topic uh, we should be covering uh, uh, for our startup council. Uh, and we uh, came out I, and I suggested that why not uh, do, uh, do on what Islam's perspective on entrepreneurship. So uh, this webinar is for somebody who wants to learn what uh, how uh, what Islam says about entrepreneurship and business, and how uh, they can kind of inshallah kickstart their dream of becoming an entrepreneur. It's no more a dream, but inshallah, when we take steps, it will become reality. So let's get started. I want to kind of quote a couple of uh, things here. First, I want to go through the agenda. What we're gonna cover here. So we will cover a little bit about Islamic perspective on why entrepreneurship and what are the benefits of being an uh, entrepreneurship or, in, uh, or having a business. And what does it take to be an entrepreneur, inshallah? What are the qualities one should have to become an entrepreneur? What you should have, so inshallah. And then we have, will go through a case study of a business, of a growing business, alhamdulillah, a Muslim growing business in America uh, company. So, and then we will, inshallah, talk about a little bit why we should comp take that step, you know, why we should do that, you know, inshallah, I'll talk about that. And finally, you know, I'll talk a little bit about the Startup Council. Most of you who are not aware about Startup Council, I'll give you a brief introduction about what, uh, what the Startup Council does, inshallah. And finally, we will take question and answer, so make sure if you guys have questions and answers, please write it down or put it in the chat box. When you, rem uh, when, when you have them, and inshallah, you can also directly ask the questions. I'll open up the line for uh, you to speak, so you can ask questions directly as well. So let's get started, inshallah. Our first topic, let's cover before, uh, first uh, why, an Islamic perspective on why entrepreneurship. So in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying again and again, believe in him and his messenger and spend out of what in which he has made you successor. For those who have believed among you and spent, there will be a great reward. So uh, most of the places in most of the ayah, there is a more stress on spending, spending in the way of Allah, spending for the people, giving sadhqah, giving charity. You know, majority of the ayah, you will see there is a lot about a lot of things Allah is talking and He's saying that you know, uh, He made successor, He made a successor, successor of whom? Successor of the earth, so that you know we are in the earth and we uh, we are Allah made earth for us so that we can work and gain uh, do business and kind of you know work our way to earn money and spend it for the sake of Allah and for the people and when the prayer is in that the second ayah uh, then disperse in the land and seek Allah's favor so Allah is again and again repeating in a majority of his ayah then you know disperse in the land work hard and seek Allah's favor those who work hard Allah will definitely give them reward 
and remember Allah much that you may succeed inshallah and one of the raya is he is <clears throat> he it is who has made the earth subservient to you you see Allah has made all these things for us so that we can walk in the path of it and eat of his provisions and to him will be resurrection so Allah is saying again and again that you know he has made earth and his uh, you know assets on the a planet for us so that you know we can make use of it for the benefit of the humanity and for ourselves inshallah and uh, everything in our deeds you know if you go through Quran if you go through the hadith you will see a lot of time everything it's about giving 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 only in Quran 30 times uh, uh, the charity is mentioned 27 times is linked with salah salah means prayer we are praying uh, uh, salah and zakah zakah give uh, pray salah and uh, give zakah so there is a much more importance of giving zakah in uh, in, in islam and three times it was mentioned th- uh, separately about zakah the word zakah so what does it say uh, when will we give zakah when we have money when we have that saving So that's why you know it also encourages these ayahs encourages us to give more 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 in charity so that you know how will we give more when we have more inshallah so and more than 70 times zakah and sadaqa are mentioned in the Quran so there is a lot of stress Allah is putting on importance of sadaqa and zakah that's why he kept keep repeating it and also uh, the our beloved nabi uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a very successful businessman this should only this is the only thing which should motivate us to be a businessman to be an entrepreneur to get started for our dream and kind of show us uh, solve social issues and social problems in the society inshallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked what type of earning was best and he replied a man man's work with his hand and every lawful business transaction subhanallah you see what the best earning for a muslim or for anyone you know the prophet muhammad was sent for the whole humanity so for the whole humanity it's the best uh, in dealing with and working with our own hands and dealing with our business transaction which which means working for ourselves and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also mentioned that you know 9 out of 10 sources of risk which is which means sustenance are coming from your business activities he didn't mention if you are employed uh, of course you know it's it's not bad to be employed and work for somebody else but there is a more stress and more importance and more reward for being a businessman and the last uh, uh, hadith really stuck me you know i was going through it i was trying to find different hadith about the importance of business and entrepreneurship in islam and one of the hadith just really struck me was that was this last one Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu who was the son of Umar ibn Khattab narrated that you know that Allah uh, Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the trustworthy honest muslim merchant will be uh, will, will be with the prophets honest men and martyrs on the day of resurrection subhanallah this is this should definitely motivate us to be an entrepreneur to go into entrepreneurship to start up our own business to give back to the humanity to big give back to our communities inshallah and finally you know i'll i'll just you know kind of stay here for a few seconds if anybody wants to take a screenshot of it and put it on the desktop this will inshallah remind them and kind of motivate them that why they should choose entrepreneurship and if you are already an entrepreneur then glad tidings to you that inshallah you will be successful if we are uh, dealing fairly in our business transaction inshallah so moving on to our second to- uh, second topic i want to also stress on the importance of business how it's going to affect the individual society as a whole and the community or a country as a whole so if we are talking about individual level you know we a way for an individual to benefit family and friends if you have the money if you have the resources inshallah you will have the power to help your family your people your uh, <clears throat> your uh, family and friends inshallah and then a way for individual to generate worldly income so that you can donate and get reward for the hereafter how beautiful is that you are working here so that you can build your hereafter with your income this is a fantastic business transaction inshallah and way to develop an individual's good character and virtuous personality see a businessman or an entrepreneur have to deal with a lot of people 
and when you talk to those people they get really you know motivated by seeing your good character or they admire seeing a good character of a businessman and and their personality so you're not going on only with, uh, helping yourself but you are also creating an impact and image on your family members your children your friends so that you know they can also get encouraged and get into a business uh, be, uh, becoming an entrepreneur on the society how it's going to affect way to reduce the problem of unemployment in the society just look at the stats we have so many people unemployed in our community or in this country why not build some organizations some businesses which can help us eradicate that uh, the unemployment from our society why not give back to the community so this is one of the benefit one of the benefit or importance of uh, you know um, opening up businesses and then way to encourage a society to be more productive and competent i can definitely say that an entrepreneur i myself i i am also working uh, i didn't don't mean any uh, bad for those who are employed but i have seen myself and people who i work with i work with a lot of entrepreneurs that you know entrepreneurs are sometime have a upper hand in terms of productivity and competence i am in no means i'm saying that you know un- uh, the employed people are not but uh, i have seen my father he is almost 70 now but he is he's a, you know he's an entrepreneur he runs a business back in india 40 years old business but still at this age where people take retirement and just settle down he just don't want to stop he just every single day even though he is sick he gets up and he makes sure he go and run his business so subhanallah it's an example for all of us that you know this makes us more productive and competent we will get out of that mentality of uh, employment and working for somebody and we will take the lead and charge of the business so that we can help people and we can make a difference in the society so moving on how it helps the community and country i mean i'm pretty sure you all can uh, you all are aware of the fact of indonesia uh if you all are aware that which is the largest muslim country uh, muslim populated country in the world is indonesia you know how the message of, uh, of uh, islam or the beautiful message of islam was was uh, reached there some of the business person or entrepreneurs from india gujarat went to indonesia to deal with business transactions and the indonesian people were so surprised seeing their character their honesty their moral conduct that you know they said you know what what makes you guys so successful you know you are so honest and you every single dealing of yours is honest and trustworthy so they talk about islam and that's how islam was spread to uh, uh, the whole country of indonesia and it's now the largest populated muslim country in indonesia which is helping people uh, in every way in the whole world so and also way to strengthen the economy of the whole community and country if we are in america a businessman gives more uh, t- taxes and hand the line we will support the country we can give back that money to our community maybe to our local massages to uh, for to our local organization who are doing a good work in the community so this way you see if we are in the power if we have the money of the power of the money alhamdulillah we can do a lot of things not just employ people give employment to the people but we can also help the country to grow and you know move forward inshallah so moving on i want to take this opportunity and talk about a little bit about some of the characteristics of entrepreneurs or what does it take uh, to be an entrepreneur and uh, i also would like to invite uh, brother adnan siddiqui to share some of his uh, he is the founder of uh, uh startup council alhamdulillah he was the one who initiated this effort lmpg team just help him but alhamdulillah i want to also kind of invite him and take because he is very well experienced person working with different startups uh, so inshallah first i'll lay down some of the uh, uh, points or kind of you know characteristics which are needed to be an entrepreneur commitment uh, to faith you know you just believe and trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are what you are doing inshallah allah will put barakah into it you must be self disciplined uh, sorry about that a at the end self discipline you should no matter people come to your uh, your employees come to your work or not maybe no matter you are single person no matter how hard uh it is you get up every single day and you have that self discipline to work off for your business you are confident 
and and alhamdulillah you are decisive and action oriented words you know words are beautiful when we talk them but they only can become reality when we work for them when we take action on those words and uh, action uh, on the on those uh, planning so inshallah a businessman or an entrepreneur should have the nature of being decisive and taking actions uh, inshallah and they should be self starter starter so my father no matter if people his employee come to business or not he runs a business there he wakes up he doesn't care he just go there he he still he do all the mini work to uh, to major work in his business so he should be self starter you know he should not wait for people to come in and to help him if there is a help alhamdulillah that is great but alhamdulillah a person should be a self starter not just this will not only help in your uh, not these characteristics will not only help an entrepreneur but also a professional Uh, who is working for somebody this will make him inshallah a more uh, uh, a worthy uh, uh, employee inshallah if we follow all this uh, uh, characteristics or if we try to uh, 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 get these characteristics uh, 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 in our personality inshallah uh, competitiveness you know they have the of course the business per- person or entrepreneurs are competitive alhamdulillah so this is also required they are passionate and motivated what motivates you money what motivates you giving back to the community what motivates you because it's a sunna what motivates you find your motivation and stick to it inshallah and be creative you know the entrepreneurs are a lot of time they are creative they wear so many hats uh, they are the marketing person they are the finance person they are the uh, uh, you know the, the the spokesperson for the uh, for the business so they are they, they have to be creative so determination and persistence they keep on doing it no matter what goes on what comes in they want to just kind of be determined and want to kind of pursue their uh, path uh, of becoming successful inshallah and uh, strong people skill this is the best part about uh, entrepreneurship you see you talk to a lot of people you can change the mindset of a lot of people when you are a businessman dealing in transaction with other people other people in your community from different communities you will you need strong people skill and you have the power to change their mindset regarding the community regarding islam regarding muslims so alhamdulillah this, this gives an opportunity for us to explain people the uh, about the beautiful message of islam inshallah and then we will have uh, we need to not just a, a entrepreneur but every muslim or every person uh, who is attending today they need to have we need to have strong work ethics we need to make sure if what for what we have hired we are delivering it delivering it and we need to make sure as a business person and entrepreneur when uh, customers are coming to us we make sure we deliver them in all our honesty and with all our ethics inshallah and future oriented they see the future the entrepreneurs see the future what's going to come they are not just playing in the present they want they have a clear vision clear eye on the future what their business going to be in future so i'm going to quickly invite uh, brother adnan sadiq inshallah i want to take some of his uh, uh, advice and uh, some of his experience we want to share uh, adnan bhai uh, can you uh, let me know what number you have dialed in through so that i can unmute you just type it in the chat box please I believe you have dialed in to a number. So if you can put it in the chat box, we would love to hear it from you. Uh, okay. I tried unmuting your name, but it does not allow me. Mm. No, it does not allow me. I don't think you are connected to audio. Uh, I mean, uh, not sure. Are you using a phone? Okay, now. I think I oh, you got it. Okay, here. Go ahead and log in. Assalamualaikum. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please Assalamualaikum. go ahead, share some of your experience. You know, talk about what are the characteristics or what are the traits you, as an entrepreneur, or you have seen in other entrepreneurs. I know you have worked with, uh, you are working and worked with a lot of startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, so let us know, give us some tips. You know, inshallah, maybe we can, we all can learn. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I, Assalamualaikum. My name is Adnan, Adnan Siddiqui. I've been in the States for about almost 40 years now. And uh, I've worked in corporations. I worked for HP for 20 years. Then I joined Amazon for a while. <clears throat> at, Amazon, at HP, I was the director of R&D uh, based out of uh, Shanghai and, and, and Taiwan. Uh, then I came to Amazon. Uh, my, my goal, my job was to, to automate the the warehouses at Amazon, and the vision is to have like the lights out. Today, there there are three thousand people work in the warehouses, and with automation, we will have nobody working in the warehouse. It's all going to be automated. And uh, in that journey, I came across uh, several startups. And uh, the vision, I mean, what I saw with the startup, the opportunity, and in. in parallel, <clears throat> I also noticed that there were a lot of people in the community, those who wanted to do the startups, but for one reason or the other, couldn't do the startup. With that, I'm going to step back a little bit. Why the startup and the technology startup? Uh, post 9-11, I did spend a lot of time trying to understand why we are where we are. And when we were glorious, what were the reasons to be glorious? And my only takeaway is that at that time, in every aspect of technology, we were ahead of time. Uh, you talk, talk about the Galileo. We published a paper about the, uh, about the Earth being the center 500 years before anybody in the West did. Uh, when it comes to camera, we had a paper published in the 11th century. Uh, there are 101 examples. We are the ones who did the first aerodynamic flight in the 9th century. There were tons of things that we did, and the world was following us. Somehow, in the course of last four or five hundred years, we lost that. So my vision was to see what we can do to bring us back on that track. And one of the ways to do that is to encourage startups, uh, only the technology-based startups. So if you have an idea, uh, and when I started looking into that, it turned out that there were a lot of barriers in it. Uh, you have to be, have a great idea. You have to have lots of contacts. You have to have a lot of money. You have to have a skillful, to be a skillful person in certain technology. And I thought to myself, what if we can create an ecosystem that an individual can come to us with just one idea and the desire to work hard? And there is an ecosystem that takes you and, uh, to the success path and whatever the gaps and the holes are, uh, people from the community can step in and join the team, not as a volunteer, but as a part of the team, and, and then they all become successful. So once we have the technology take us ahead in the world, we can bridge the gap. And I don't have the vision that we want to lead, lead the world that we did 1,000 years ago, but at least at par with the rest of the world so we can contribute in different things, what is happening in globally. Uh, at this point of time, we are kind of lagging behind a little bit, to be, to be honest. So that was the reason. And so our vision right now is that to be an entrepreneur, uh, we are creating an environment that has a zero entry barrier for technologists, meaning, I think I'm repeating myself, but meaning if you have an idea and a desire to work hard, you come back and join us, and we will make sure that you are successful. Uh, I have been. So I, I, I want to talk, talk a little bit about uh, what we should, uh, what those brothers or sisters they should have the characteristics in them to, to get started going with their uh, idea or their business. What should you know? What should be their traits? You know, what are the characteristics, if I can say, about the entrepreneurs? which we want to want our brothers and sisters to realize in themselves. Right. So if without the, the startup council, if you're trying to start a business, 
then you have to have a vision. You have to have the drive. You have to have your blinders on and you put the whole life on hold and just to stay focused on it. You have to be diligent. You have to be determined and, and lots of lots of luck to be successful. But uh, today what we are doing is we are creating an environment that an individual who just have an, a great idea and a desire to work hard, that's all, that's all we expect from you to come in, right. give us the idea, work with us, and we will provide you uh, whatever is needed to be successful. Uh, my assessment is startups prior to this, their success rate is about 9 to 11%, depends whose paper you are reading. Looking at the causes of failure, we think we can eliminate most of these and we can take our success rate almost to 50% very easily. So, so that said, I think we would like you to, to consider it. Uh, I, I have been using this example for a while. In today's environment, without the Startup Council, uh, if you are trying to be an entrepreneur, it is exactly like you are trying to learn how to swim. And what you decided in order to learn how to swim, what you decided to do in the middle of the night, you go to the river, climb up on a tree, and jump into the river and hope that you will learn how to swim. That's the current startup environment, especially in the technology space. We are taking that away, and what we are doing is we are going to teach you how to swim. We will take you to the swimming pool. We'll give you a life jacket. There's going to be a lifeguard there's going to be a rope and a, and a tire. And in that environment, we assure you when you come out of it, you will not drown, for it almost guaranteed. And then you will be a much better swimmer than you went in with. Th that's the example that I have been using to explain uh, why uh, working with us and us creating an environment. And the best part of the at the end of this is going to be joining the community on the grounds of technology and economics, we are more likely to, to be on the same platform and rather than divided. So there are huge benefits for everybody. With that, I'll hand it back to Daudbhai. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And I really appreciate you guys joining in and hope you can sign up with the council. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. You know, I hope you know they get motivated and they start their businesses. They start their uh, what they have to, uh, what they have in mind their, with their idea. Inshallah, if you all can need help, as Adnan Bhai said, uh, brother Adnan said, you know, you can reach out to us anytime. The startup council. So I'll talk about startup council a little bit also uh, at the end. But uh, now I want to invite uh, uh, go through one of the business case studies. So I want to invite brother Asif. Uh, Brother Asif is here from Red Parrot team. So, inshallah, I'll invite him. Brother Asif, uh, please ping me if you are ready uh, on the chat box. I can unmute you then. Okay, mashallah, he's ready. So, I'll share your uh, slides as well on the screen. But before that, I'll let me unmute you so that you can give a brief introduction about yourself and then we can get started, inshallah. Go ahead. I have unmuted you. Sure. Jazakallah al khair, Brother Dawood. Um, my name is, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I'm Asif uh, Hussein. I'm based in Dallas, Texas. Um, I have a story to share with you um, around a startup that I'm involved in. I have previously um, worked in the startup field, so I have worked in, I work currently in the technology field, and I've, uh, I had uh, a startup that was in the technology space in the past that was more geared dear towards uh, content. And I've also have a, had a startup in the labor and services field. And then I took a step back and got involved with DeFinance when this opportunity came to me from an investment standpoint. What I particularly appreciate about this, this, um, this company is that it's actually solving a problem that, that I experienced personally. Uh, with myself. So I really felt strongly about getting involved. And since I've been involved in the last few months, I, I've taken on more of an active role from a business development standpoint. And the company is DeFinance, um, and that's what we're here to talk about today. And it, it is addressing the student debt problem that's, that, that's, uh, that this country is facing today. 
So if you move to this next slide, um, here's some statistics about how big this problem so, truly is. Just to let the audience know, uh, today Brother Farouk was supposed to be in here uh, to talk about defiance. Brother Asif is filling in for him. He had some medical emergency in the family, so he had to just kind of, you know, he couldn't attend it. So alhamdulillah, that's why most of you, if you are looking why there is a name for Brother Farouk there, he was supposed to be in here. Uh, but uh, due to an emergency, he couldn't make it. So just pray for Thank him as well and for his family. Go ahead, Brother Asif. Thank you, Brother Dawood. Yes, um, yeah, um, yeah, so he couldn't make it today. I'm, I'm just stepping in for him, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so from this perspective, you know, coming back to the the problem that we're actually trying to solve, this is a real social issue that we have in the country today. Um, there's over $1.5 trillion of student loan debt. I was actually reading a recent article that by 2042, um, it is projected to exceed the amount of debt in mortgages. And this is a very real problem because people that are burdened with student loan debt have to often um, make decisions based off of their debt in their life. So they may postpone getting into a house, getting married, um, having children. Maybe they're forced to work in a particular field that they're not passionate about or they're not particularly interested in because they need to, to have a greater income. So it really straps down the opportunities for people. And it affects particularly the uh, immigrant class, quite considerably. Um, some of the other statistics, statistics you look at not, uh, on this particular slide, over 45 million students have um, student debt problem. The average is about $31,000 for every student. And $242 billion of that $1.5 trillion is um, private student loan debt. This is where DeFinance is focusing. And of that $242 billion that is currently borrowed in student, student debt, only 8% of that has been financed. And when, after graduating, I looked for ways to consolidate my student, uh, student loan debt, and there weren't many companies that were out there offering this service. There's only a handful of companies that will consolidate uh, your student, -led, student debt for you. So this is a great need in the industry. Also, they're all based on interest. So for, for someone from our faith that, that is looking to get out, of, get out of interest, there are no options today. So we came up with DeFinance. So if you go to the next slide. Brother Dawood, can you move to the next slide? Sure. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Okay. So our solution is, to, is um, leveraging the concept of an income share agreement. The way an income share agreement works is based on the debt that you have in student loan debt. We would look at that. We would look at your course of study, your current job, and you would apply to the finance. The finance would um, approve approve you, pay off your student loan debt. So at that point, you no longer have any debt associated with your name, and you don't are student loan debt, and you don't, you don't, you're not involved in interest. And in exchange for that, the uh, finance asks the student to sign an income share agreement. An income share agreement would be set for either like 5, 10, or 15 years, and it would be on a, per, a percentage of your income. So what that does is it aligns the student and, and the investor, um, both in the same direction. So if a student is successful and they're earning more income over time, it's better for the student and it's better for the investor. Whereas traditionally, uh, when a bank loans you money and let's say you lose a job and for six months you're out of work, what happens then? Well, you're going to be required to continue to make payments. Your um, principal balance would increase, your credit score may be affected, and, it, and it's a snowball effect. If your credit score is affected, then those, there are more financial problems down the road. If you're in an income share agreement, you're only 
um, expect it to make a payment if you're currently working and you have an income. So in that scenario, when you're out of work for six months, your payments would go on hold automatically because you have no income, no payment is due. And the percentage of income would never be more than 15%. It would be always 15% and below. So what this means essentially is there's downside protections for someone that when they're going through a tough position in their, in, in, in their career, when they don't have a job, or let's say they want to go back to school and they want to maybe go for a master's degree, well, an income share agreement would allow for that because if you go back to school and you're going for a master's degree, then in that scenario, when you graduate, it's likely that you're going to have a higher income. So the investor would be willing to take on that risk. So an income share agreement really is a, a way to take a student that is chained down with interest and debt and moving, in, moving them into a new type of agreement that is not based on any of that. So, so it has those customer protections. One of the other things we realized in our research is that 94% of student loans have a variable interest rate. With an income share agreement, the percentage of income that you pay would never change, whether your income goes up or whether that income goes down. So this is a very, we call this social responsibility. This is looking out for the student as well as the investor. Instead of being one-sided, it's, it's a shared investment. Next slide. So who do we target? Um, we have two groups. We look at these as like supply and demand in terms of our business model. The refinancers are the students that have graduated and are working. So we're focused on, on, on looking for students that have unsubsidized uh, graduate loans or private student loans or student loans with variable interest rates. That's one side of our business. We call that the demand business. So these are applicants to definance. And then on the other side, we have investors. And the investors that we're targeting are social impact investors. So that would be like our Muslim community that would try, is looking for a solution to get the, the students that are tied down with interest and debt into a more equitable uh, agreement or financing option. Or self-directed 401ks or IRAs to in, in invest into these students and into the future of these students that have graduated. Or, and we're also looking at um, approaching large institutions, pension funds, um, really trying to give an opportunity for people that are socially conscious, that, um, that want to stay away from interest, and companies that maybe may not be aligned in the social perspective and have the same value system with us, an opportunity for an investment into students that have graduated um, from school. So rather than investing in, in anything interest-based, we, we're trying to provide an, op an avenue, a new investment model um, for, for the rest of the community that, that is more conscious about those type of invest of where their money is being invested. Next slide. So where are we today? So we are in this, uh, if you look on the left side, we're in a private beta. So we're about a month into our private beta. What we're doing here is our goal is to find um, a number of a um, uh, applicants that adds up to about $350,000 of student loans that, that, that they currently have. And that could be anywhere between 8 to 12 based on the $31,000 average that we, that, that we um, researched. Also, as part of this private beta, we are, all our processes manual, so a lot of touch. So we're talking to a lot of applicants, helping them through the process, gathering the information, helping them with the application, the interview. So a part of this stage is we're looking for opportunities to automate our process. So the goal is when you go to our website today, you fill out a form, you put in all the information, and someone calls you, and then it takes us a couple weeks for us to provide a quote back to the student on what their income share percentage would be and give them options on how long they would want that term to be. 
and then they would approve and then we would move forward. We want to get to a point where that can all be automated. So as they're filling out their information, we can quickly give them a quote and let them know this is, this is what the offer looks like for you. And then after this stage, we'll move into the public beta. This is really when we're going to start investing more in, into marketing. And now that our processes have been um, proven out and more automated, we can start taking in more scale. And this is when we'll start approaching more of the institutions from an investment standpoint. So far today, we have a we have about a dozen applicants, and we're working at the pro working through the process, and we're getting very good feedback um, on what we're able to offer uh, these students that have graduated with a lot of debt. Next slide. So, what our unique advantages are? So, the, what makes Definance um, separate from everyone else is that we're the only product out there from a student loan refinancing standpoint that has a model that's not based on interest, it's not based on debt, and we have a mechanism within each of our programs with the ISAs that we help the individual actually buy back into their ISA as a student, and we help them save money through the course of their ISA. So once their term is completed, we actually give them um, an option to either end the term early or take on um, a savings uh, a payment back to them for completing um, their ISA. Because one of the other challenges we saw is when these individuals have graduated and are working and they're paying their student loans, they're not able to actually set money aside to save for their own future. So we've built this mechanism within the ISA agreement which helps to save, helps them save money through the, through the model of our ISA. We also use an algorithm and machine learning to track different lines of study in college and universities and map them to the type of careers that, individual, that the students are ending up in and what, within the career, what is their growth? What kind of income are they, uh, are, are, are they, are they making two years, five years down the road? Is there another tangent or adjacent career field that they should consider in, in, in from a monetary sp standpoint, it would benefit for benefit to move from like QA to BA, for, for instance, in the, in the technical space. So we want to actually guide these individuals and help them make sound decision um, on where should they should take their career. Because at the end of the day, with the ISA model, the student and the investor are aligned on the student's success. Um, so this is some of the advantages that we find that is really differentiates us. Um, we are also working on a marketplace to give people the opportunity to invest directly in, in, in students and then students to match up investors um, with, with potential students with ISAs. So we can do this. We can white label this service to others as well. So this is our slide um, deck. This is what I wanted to cover. I also wanted to mention that, um, you know, we've been working with the Startup Council. They, they have met with us several times and, and helped us, get, provided us feedback uh, on our company, our presentation, and we're really thankful for that. And we're strong supporters uh, of the Startup Council initiative. If you have particular interests, if you have student loans, if you would, are interested in potentially investing, um, please take down this contact information and reach out to us. We're on social media at Definance. Uh, we also have the, the uh, our website is www.definance.com. Uh, our contact phone number is there as well. Um, but we would uh, encourage you if, you, if you have student loans today, um, we, can, we have an opportunity to really help you. And if you're looking from a business perspective to invest in this model and have interest to learn more, um, please reach out. Jazakallah, Mokai. 
Jazakallah khair, brother Asad. Thank you so much for coming in. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. You see, uh, <clears throat> my aim was, uh, my, or, uh, you know, our, our team aim was to bring in somebody from outside who's really working as an entrepreneur. So if you can quickly tell me in a couple of minutes, you know, uh, what do you see as an uh, in uh, as in brother Farooq? He he himself is an entrepreneur. You are, yourself are an entrepreneur. What keeps you going, both of you? It, it's it's a passion, right? So it's, it's a passion. passion and caring about what we're trying to do. Like we feel that we can truly help people, and this is a cause mm-hmm. that's going to alleviate problems, real problems that people are struggling with in life. And you have to be strong and confident in that because as you progress as an entrepreneur, you're going to run into a lot of setbacks, a lot of discouragement. But you have to have a thick thick skin and and keep your vision down the road and realize why you're doing this. I'm a firm believer that, like, when you're on the right path, you're going to have challenges. So it's – um, so you have to go through that hardship to find that ease and, and, and find that uh, success. One of the best things someone told me was the most successful people are the ones that make themselves uncomfortable often so that when they learn yes. a new thing. And this is yes. uh, very much aligned with, with the spirit of an entrepreneur. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> uncomfortable uh, kind of, you know, situation kind of uh, make us to think out of the box, make us uh, go that extra mile, make us think, you know, for people and think that, you know, you know, this is where uh, it started for ALMPG as well. If you are, if I can give a quick uh, a brief background, you know, uh, we, the founders of ALMPG, uh, four of us, we went through the process of job finding and uh, we were out of job for months and months and months. So we were in a situation where we said, okay, no, it, this is too much. We, there's nobody who can help us. Let's create a platform where we can help people. So you see, out of that situation, we kind of came up with the idea of, you know, helping people out. And alhamdulillah, uh, it's been almost close to three years now, LMPG is alhamdulillah helping hundreds of students and uh, Muslim business, uh, businesses as well, and also professionals as well, alhamdulillah. So Jazakallah khair, Brother Asif, for your time. Please give our, our regards to uh, Brother uh, Farooq. I know his family member is uh, in the hospital. Please uh, let, let him know that we are praying for him and his family, inshallah. Absolutely, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. We are cool. Okay. So let's move on, inshallah. Uh, <clears throat> that was the finance. It's a kind of, you know, Muslim business. Alhamdulillah, you know, you see how one step was taken and uh, such a big uh, uh, company was found and created and they are working on it, inshallah. Make dua for them so that they can become successful. So our motive was uh, to bring in such businesses so that we all can get motivated from this by hearing this story and how they are uh, uh, eradicating a social problem. This is a big problem, student debt. So alhamdulillah, they found a solution, a halal Islamic solution, which can help not only the students, it can also help investors invest their money in a halal way, in a, in a way which will help the community, and they will be kind of socially responsible. So alhamdulillah, it's a win-win situation for both the parties. So now moving on, I'll, I want to kind of, you know, uh, let's just get to it. So why not let's take that step? So alhamdulillah, I want everybody to take a step. But before that, I want to kind of, you know, quote a, uh, <clears throat> um, put a quote here from Hazrat Rumi. He was one of the greatest poets from Southeast Asia. And he said, you were born with, with wings. Why you preferred uh, to crawl through life? So if, in, if I say this in Urdu, jab Allah ne tumko jo hai, uh, so that's the meaning of it, you know, said that when Allah, when Allah has granted, given you wings, why you want to crawl in life? So, you know, this really struck me. I, one of the entrepreneurs, I met him uh, back in 2015, and I was sitting with him in a, 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 in a fundraising event. He was right next to me. Alhamdulillah, he was a successful businessman. And he told me, he asked me, what do you do? I said, you know, I work for a company so and so. And he said, he quoted me this, uh, this really good quote from Hazrat, uh, from Hazrat Rumi. And I was like shocked. 
uh, the way he said, he said, uh, Jab Allah ne tumko pang diye hai, why do you want to crawl? Why do you want to kind of, you know, crawl through your life? Inshallah, become successful and inshallah, you know, you can help people. And uh, I have been learning more and more about entrepreneurship and, you know, you have to create an opportunity if there is not one. If opportunity does not knock on your door, build a door. Like you see, the, the example we just gave from Definance, there was no, there, there was an opportunity and they worked on it. If there was not, op- there, there is not an opportunity, you build one. You build a door and you kind of move on with that opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you will, you all will be surprised that you know, out of 64 companions of Prophet Muhammad, only five of them, five of them were working for some, someone else. That too, because they were slaves, this was before the Islam, they were slaves or they were, you know, some, um, working for somebody. But majority of the companion, the close companions of Prophet Muhammad, they used to do business. And what is stopping us? As, as I quoted in the first uh, a couple of slides that, you know, Prophet Muhammad said, nine out of ten parts of risk are in business. So what is stopping us? What is stopping us? So Alhamdulillah, I want every one of you to take a lead in this and Alhamdulillah, start your own business and, you know, start working on your entrepreneurship dream. All the major uh, prophets of God, righteous people like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Muslim, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, an Nisai, Rahimullah, all of them were businessmen. They were successful in terms of religion, in terms of dunya as well. When they, uh, when they left the world, they left so much money for their family and for their akhirah that they could, you know, they, they could live a good life. So definitely, alhamdulillah, it's going to help them back in, uh, when, they are, uh, when they are gone, alhamdulillah, with all this money. Remember all this money we are working. Uh, see, we have a notion in our mind that, you know, Islam means, okay, just uh, be righteous, be you, but money, you know, just stay away from money. No, no, no. Sahaba, Sahaba, remember this, Sahaba never used to hate money. They used to hate the concept of making money and just saving it not spending in the uh, spending for people not spending in the way of Allah so that is where what they hated most sahaba never hated the wealth they had wealth they had so much wealth that you know they used to, but the thing they hated most was, was that fact that you know they were uh, someone accumulating the wealth and not spending it for on the people or his family on or on the community so that's the thing and Right now, there was a research done, how many billionaires are there? You know, there are 2,000 plus billionaires in the world. More than half of them had a rags to riches story. More than half of them. Just look at that number. You know, they had no resources. They had nobody to help. They were poor people from rags to riches. So they worked hard. They had an idea and they came up and they become, alhamdulillah, billionaire. So, and now majority of them, they spend this money to impress themselves or the world. But just imagine if we are making that money and if we are socially responsible, how much we can help uh, with that money to the uh, people and uh, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want you all to start thinking on this. Not maybe now, but start working on it. Maybe after six months you come to us and we will inshallah try to help you. Or you reach out to me saying, Brother Dawood, I have opened up a business, alhamdulillah. And business in the sense, don't just limit yourself just to business means, what do, what do we think? Either a store or a gas station. No, think out of the box. The technology is growing. As Brother Adnan said, you know, we were uh, some years back, a few centuries back, we were ahead of the world. The technology is right in front of us. Come out with technological solution for this society. It's the next generation would be AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, all this IT stuff. You know, come up with technology. If you are working on a business, make sure you keep expanding your business. Make sure you have the power to reach out to the authorities when you have when you are doing business. Alhamdulillah, which makes who makes the decision? Oh, you know, you think you want to change the situation of this country? You will think you will go and become pol- uh, a politician. But no, remember, politicians do not make make only laws and rules and regulation only for the businesses. So who is more powerful here, politician or businesses? It's the businesses. Politician, you know, I was just hear, hearing in the news, Joe Biden is uh, say, uh, setting up a fundraising event so that he can get money so that he can become a uh, run for president. 
so you see uh, who is helping them businesses so if we have those businesses we can help set up a person in a, in the white house who is socially and morally responsible person we can change the face of this country we can give this country better people so that's what i'm saying so <clears throat> moving on it, the, the business not just give you the entrepreneurship not just give you money but it also give you self dignity you give it gives you honor it gives you strength if you have $10 uh if somebody is asking for $5 you might think a lot but if you have $2000 somebody is asking for $5 you will be easily able to help so you see you have the strength and strength to help somebody out now so that's the way and give you time you know i have seen alhamdulillah my father i have i am my grandfather was a businessman my great grandfather was a businessman my father so i have seen there is you get a lot of time they say sometimes you know you in the beginning you want but ultimately when you open a become an entrepreneur you open up a business you get ample amount of time which we can spend that time with our family educating and giving tarbiya to our student uh, to our uh, children what best you can do maybe you work 5 years now and rest of the life you sit with your children you talk to them you be their friend and you can spend a lot of time with your family and you can give your wealth and money uh, do a lot more with it open institution which can help the needy and open a hospitals which can help the needy what is bad in that ha- uh, making money and giving to the society it is only bad when you make money and you kind of you know uh, talk about me i me myself no that should not be the mentality of a muslim entrepreneur or a muslim businessman um i was uh, going through some research and going through some videos and uh, you know you will be surprised that there are some businessmen in indonesia and saudi arabia they give uh, almost half of their wealth for charity and allah has ble- allah keep blessing them they give half of their wealth wallahi this is a true fact i was shocked you know how could they do it but they are doing it this is kind of a trend that you know they follow their friends they have who have been doing it and they are doing it so you know see you see when you have wealth you can help uh, the community your uh, country as well so moving on you know sahaba th- that's what i said you know sahaba they never used to hate wealth but they used to hate the fact that one want wealth without giving so alhamdulillah you know make sure uh, i just want wanted this webinar that you know if even a single person single one of you become a successful entrepreneur and giving back to the community we all will have a share of reward in that the whole team of startup council the whole team of almpg and all the brothers who are here so alhamdulillah that is my aim uh, but from here i want most of you to be, start your dream and work on your entrepreneurship dream inshallah so uh, i i see 41 people attending right even five become a successful entrepreneur inshallah but how will you become successful as brother adna said you know the startup council i'm going to talk a little bit about startup council it's first ever muslim incubator for muslim minorities in america we have a website we are a non-profit organization so don't worry about it you can come to us we are all volunteering here we already have 15 plus ideas in queue we are working with uh, with the entrepreneurs and we have a team of 20 plus people and most of them are so passionate about helping people subhanallah like brother adnan like ilyas bhai like riyaz bhai like uh, brother nader brother uh, sister hajra uh, sister halima all of these people they want to help uh, they have a vision they want to kind of ignite that fire uh, uh, for those entrepreneurs and help them so that they can become successful so you see we have 20 plus uh, a team of 20 plus people of entrepreneurs business women and men sea suit management community leaders and more and alhamdulillah it gives me immense pleasure when somebody comes to me and say hey i'm successful inshallah so we are on facebook linkedin and twitter as well inshallah so if you are still not aware about startup council go register yourself if you want i can kind of you know walk through the website a quick walk through i'll just uh, go open the website so that you all can have a look at the website inshallah so <clears throat> this is just for for the sake so that you know you can go on to the website and submit your idea 
And uh, this startup council, this ecosystem is not just only for entrepreneurs, right? So you go here, you submit your idea if you have an idea. Right now we are more focusing towards technology business, not the traditional businesses. You can get a lot of help regarding traditional businesses in our masjid. Go and speak to a business person there. Inshallah, they can help and guide you. But you see here we have an ecosystem for entrepreneurs, skilled professional. If you are a skilled professional, join now so that, you know, when an entrepreneur comes up with an idea, they need a skilled professional, we can refer you to them and you guys can work together. Same goes with the business partner. If you have a business, you want to share your services and get paid, you know, inshallah, you can submit and join us now. And inshallah, when an entrepreneur comes in with the technology or any kind of idea, they might need somebody for marketing. They might need somebody for uh, finance. They might need somebody for something. So if you, ha if you uh, have those services, make sure you uh, join us so that, you know, we uh, send you update when we need you, inshallah. And mentors, especially we need mentors. We need mentors. Our society, nobody wants to lead. This is a true fact. Nobody wants to lead. Nobody wants to give back. Why is that? What is holding us? Believe me, when you give back, when you lead, inshallah, Allah will put so much barakah into it. So I encourage all the people who have, alhamdulillah, experience, who have the knowledge, who have the capacity, who have the time, utilize it to uh, mentor people. So join us, become mentors. So if you are already a successful entrepreneur, become a member. Uh, Brother Asif is here. I'm going to definitely ask him to become a mentor. I think he is already uh, a mentor, but I would, if he is not, please, Brother Asif, make sure you become a mentor now. Inshallah, in future, Brother Asif company will can, uh, can also be investors here, and they can invest there in Alhamdulillah Profit with us so that, you know, we can help the coming entrepreneurs. So investors, if you have money, you don't know where to spend it, how to kind of, you know, invest it, Inshallah, we will come up with proposals of entrepreneurs who are working, and you can invest into their uh, businesses. Like the same way you can help Brother Asif now with his investment, uh, Red Parrot, uh, sorry, uh, Definance with their own, uh, with their company. You can invest there. It's a halal business. You can invest there. So inshallah, we, we, if you are an investor and want help, join us inshallah. If we have a, a valid uh, business proposal, we can present it to you and you can invest into it inshallah. So this is a whole ecosystem, not just for entrepreneurs, but for, as I said, for skilled professionals, for business partners, for mentors, and for, even for uh, investors to invest into halal projects. So alhamdulillah, go ahead, submit the idea. Uh, I, I think not a lot of people are still aware of Startup Council, but we are growing steady, and alhamdulillah, uh, we have a long way to go, but alhamdulillah, we are still working hard and making sure that we help people to fulfill their dream. As Brother Adnan said, we want to be uh, make a zero entry barrier for entrepreneurs to become entrepreneurs, inshallah. So moving back to my slides, I think I am almost there. So I would like to invite now all the uh, team of Startup Council and uh, <clears throat> And uh, ALMPG, if, if any one of you are here, please take on some questions. Brother Adnan, uh, I will open uh, up the uh, dias. Inshallah, you can answer some of the questions. Do we have any question? I'm going to put it in the Q&A mode, and you can ask questions to Brother Adnan. Who else is here? Uh, is Brother, please, from Startup Council team, just put it in the chat box. Who else is here? so that we know that you are here uh, and uh, they, you can take some questions. Right, so this is Adnan and I'm here. And, yes, uh, yes, think, this is. Thank you very much for uh, the, uh, Habibul, uh, Habibul Alam you know, for the question and it's, it's a very valid question. The question asked is, hey, I'm very comfortable with my paycheck and it's a huge risk for me to get off my comfort zone and do a startup. And I think a lot of us have been in that position and are in the same position, and it's difficult. I think the first thing is that you have to you have to have a great idea that you want to solve, and the problem is real. Once that happens, I think the startup council can help you gradually move into that position. What we have been doing is a couple of startups that we have done is the entrepreneurs have the idea. They came up with the idea. We made a team that the entrepreneur just have to do a little bit of the front work, maybe a few hours in a week or, or a day after, works, after work. 
and the rest of the people pick up the slack and and as a team they move forward until they get to a point where the revenues are coming or they get funded and then at least one or two of them can quit their job and and jump into this space so so yes i totally understand the question uh, i have been through this myself uh, and I think there are so, several other members of the team, those who are going through this, but uh, we can do the gradual transition instead of, as I said earlier, uh, trying to learn how to swim, going to the river in the middle of the night and jumping from a tree. As compared to that, we will walk you through the process in a swimming pool in a more controlled environment. And that's the whole idea. I hope that answers the question. Jazakallah khair. Do we have any other question? Let me put it on a... So what you all can do is join the Q&A mode and you can ask the question directly through your phone or through your computer. Uh, go ahead. Uh, okay, we have one caller, uh, Brother Najam Hassan. I'm going to unmute you. Please ask your question. Okay, go ahead, Brother Najam. Assalamu alaikum. So my question is about uh, consulting by business business like in uh, big data and uh, in the healthcare space. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any thoughts about that kind of uh, business? Uh, Adama, you want to take that question? Yeah, I was going to give Brother Nader an opportunity to respond. If not, then I'll, I'll jump in. Sure. So let me unmute Brother Nader. Uh, okay, he's here. And don't I have unmuted them. you, Brother. Go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, the question was, just to clarify, the question was around uh, big data and healthcare and, and what are the opportunities, or did I completely misinterpret? That? Consulting in big data and healthcare, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of business. Uh, and what consulting was, uh, business, you know, I, I think he meant consulting business. Is that right, Brother Najam? That's correct. Oh, I, okay. And, and the, yes. the question is around, Sorry, I guess I didn't understand the question. I think he's basically asking how's the business for consulting business I and mean, how is how how is that? Yeah, so let, uh, let he me wants take to, uh, yeah. Yeah, let me take a step at that. I think the in the big data space and healthcare, the opportunity is phenomenal. Uh, the business, the TAM total available market is is huge, uh, and I think this whole industry is about to go on its head pretty soon in the next five to ten years. So people, right. those who get in this space are, are going to be, be very beneficial. Uh, I think in the big data and the analytics portion, the technology barrier is not that high. So you expect right. a lot of competition. But in the healthcare space in this area, there are old partners, people, those who are entrenched, and they're creating huge entry barriers. So that's, it's not a technology play per se. Uh, it's more of a, uh, how do you overcome the obstacles of the entrenched partners, those who are already there, they will create the problem. So the way I am tackling these in different three or four startups that I'm working with, instead of taking them head on, we are finding a small verticals where we are comfortable, I have my foot in the door, I know the people, I know the problem, we solve that problem at a smaller scale. This is trillions and trillions of dollar industry. Out of that, if I can get a few hundred million dollars, which is a chunk change for them, they will never pay attention to you. You can take and run with that and get yourself established and then go to the ministry. That's the approach I would take. Great, Jazakallah. That's a great piece of... Brother Najam, by the way, I work in healthcare and I work with big data. So there is a huge, huge potential even for consulting. If you want to start up a consulting business, go do your research. But there is a, as Brother Najam said, there is a huge kind of, you know, opportunity in there, inshallah, because most of the, uh, in my kind of company, I work for one of the largest healthcare clients here in LA. And they have moved from a traditional database to big database because of their data volume. So definitely there there is hope and there is there are opportunities in there so I hope uh, that answers your question uh, so let me let me ask the uh, brother Najam if you have some idea or if you're contemplating something uh, I would be more than happy to set up some time with you and then we can have a kind of side conversation if you like yes uh, inshallah I'm uh, I, me and I have a 
I have a person, uh, brother, uh, I'm talking to him. We are right now I'm doing my PhD. So after the PhD, I'm planning to start that in like uh, five, six months. Um, uh -huh. And he's also in the healthcare space and he has a PhD as well. Um, and uh, I, right now I work as IT project manager in, um, you know, and our client is also healthcare. Uh, so th that's what we are trying to plan out and see how we can um, approach the clients and uh, what is our method of entry would be. My my suggestion would be, brother, to you is if you, if you go don't mind, go ahead and sign up and just give us one line, your problem statement. I will take a look at it and then we can have a side conversation. Okay, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Let's take another call from phone number 0100. Okay. Uh, go ahead, brother or sister. Please ask a question. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Mohsin. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. So it was a great, indeed, a great uh, session. I'm so happy and thrilled to join this uh, uh, session. It was wonderful. Jazakumullah. So coming to the question, one of the major hindrances most of the people are challenging me that the, the, we are facing to join, uh, to jump on to, to entrepreneurship. Uh, first of all, that's the idea. Uh, Adnan, uh, Brother Adnan had said about that, you know, how do we move out of the um, comfort zone and jump on to get an idea. So, so that, that idea part is one piece of it. Second piece of it is the capital. So, the lack of capital is one of the biggest hindrance I feel to to hop on to uh, entrepreneurship. So how do we overcome that? So if I heard correctly, I think you're concerned, uh, Brother Mosin. Thank you very much for joining the webinar, and and I really appreciate the question. And the big question you are asking is the biggest concern is the capital. Is, right. is that right? So I'm just summarizing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I believe that there is enough money out there. If your idea is well grounded and you are backed up by certain entities and if you've proven that the idea is worth it, uh, there is enough money out there. I can tell you in, in Seattle area, on a given night, with 100, 150 people for just simple uh, uh, causes, we are generating two to $300,000 in one night with 150 people. So that makes me believe that the money is out there. Money is not the problem. Now the question is when you talk, go to somebody and talk with them, hey, this is my great idea, you as an individual going there and asking for money, and so they have to do all the homework to see if you are real, if you have done your homework, if the problem is real, if the technology is there, if your team is there. As compared to that, if we go to them as a startup council, now there is an organization backing you. So we believe that in the next couple of years, we would solve this money problem. And uh, recently, last week, I had... Uh, one of the mutual funds, I had a discussion with their CEO and I gave them, I told them about our plan and to show them the ROIs that we normally get from these startups. Uh, his first statement was, tell me, how, tell me how many programs you have and how, many, how much money you need for all of these programs. So I am very comfortable in making the statement, Give once we take your project, bootstrap it with minimum amount of money to a certain level, we should be able to find money. That will that should not be a problem. And I tell you, right. for the, the reasons for failures for most of the startups are is not the money. Uh, I am involved in several of the startups. Uh, these people are not they are great visionary from the technology point of view, but when it comes to business, there are a lot of holes in, the, in their uh, in this space, and that's where we come in. We, we help bridge those gaps, and that's going to make them successful. It's not going to be the, just the technology that's going to make them successful. 
Jazakallah khairan nabai. So any it, it, it applies for everybody, not just for brother, uh, for this brother. So alhamdulillah, if anybody, as brother now said, you know, alhamdulillah, if you have a backing up of an organization, it, may, it puts more uh, <clears throat> credit to your uh, proposal, inshallah, there we can help you. I hope that answers your question, brother. Mohsin, uh, Jazakallah khair for joining in. Uh, feel free to, as brother now said, to, uh, you know, you know, please feel free, free to put in your idea if you have one kind of just one liner inshallah our team will reach out to you inshallah and we have one other brother or sister from phone number 7952 I have unmuted you go ahead Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi for your time uh, the question I had and this is not to doubt your sincerity or uh, anything like that but um, uh, you know for any uh, any such uh, situation where we're sharing our idea. What's the guarantee, or what's what are the measures in place? Um, you know, as a as a person who has an idea, uh, to assure me that my idea will not be taken from me, and then you know somebody else will invest it. In case, well, in both cases, in, in case I give the idea, and in the case where I give the idea, and then don't uh, proceed with the business. Okay. And then, why uh, you want to take that question? Yeah. So uh, I am myself an entrepreneur and, and, and involved in several of the startups. So from day one, I realized the importance of uh, intellectual property. So we are inherently building up an organization that we don't share. It's, uh, we only share companies and for, uh, startups information on need to know basis. We have five verticals, and we, in each vertical, we only talk about the high level, about the company, and we never share the details unless it's necessary for them to conduct a business. So our culture is evolving because we realize it, the importance of having this uh, perception that we, we respect the IP and the confidentiality. If we lose that, then we don't have an organization. Right. So that's Absolutely. our primary tenant. And, and as a, as a uh, I'm part of the community, we are a little loosey-goosey with our, our confidentiality. And uh, I am coming from the corporate world, HP and the, and the Amazon, where confidentiality is a major thing. And I'm, I'm trying to uh, get the same tenacity in that space uh, in, in our in our corporation that is not going to be any different uh, I think that's that's and uh, I think in the, at the end of the day the proof is going to be in the pudding so so far I am very very diligent about it and every member of the community of, of our core team is is totally on board with this that the confidentiality is the key thing and we, we cannot we cannot lose that All right <clears throat> so I hope that answers your question. So, brother, Alhamdulillah, we have been very confidential about the projects we are working on, and how much information we share out with other people. So we make sure that because it's an amana, it's a trust you have on us. So we don't want to lose that. So we are doing whatever we can to make sure that we protect your idea. Inshallah, I hope that answers your question. So yeah. let me add, add so. that one more real quick here, uh, brother Dawood. Uh, talked to me a couple of days ago and said if I could talk about a company and my first thought was yes we have a very ideal case that I can bring it here and show it to everybody how to get it started but then I realized that the company is not at a point so I backed out and said nope we will not although it's going to benefit the webinar a lot but I have to respect the confidentiality and we decided not to share that at this time I think in six months from today, when the company has launched, then I would be the first one to come out and share that information with you. We are very excited about that company. Inshallah, inshallah. So yeah, that will be a for, uh, and then by that will be our first or second project uh, successful. Inshallah. Inshallah. 
Inshallah. So Jazakallah khair, brother, for your time. So I will take one more. And uh, brother who just asked the question, I, sorry, I didn't get your name. Please feel free to send in your uh, business, uh, your ID, Inshallah. We'll take a look. And I'll personally, Inshallah, make sure to reach, reach out to you, Inshallah. And we, okay, we don't have anybody. Okay, we have brother uh, Muhammad Hussein. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to kind of, you know, unmute you. Mm, uh, actually, I don't. Okay, you have been unmuted. Go ahead, ask your question. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, brothers, Jazakumullah khairan. I, I really am so excited, and this is very amazing, helpful program. Thank you, and may Allah reward you for that. Uh, I'm not sure if I missed some of the information because of my audio. One of the brothers covered private loan for the students. Uh, is there any business loans um, that you suggest or you know? I have a friend of mine who wants to open a medical lab or something related to a doctor thing. So he was wondering what kind of halal investment he can get. Uh, so this is a good opportunity you. for me to to share this. <clears throat> we are being asked constantly to help traditional businesses. And if I don't, uh, Brother I'm sorry, I missed your name, but uh, you talked about the medical lab. So I would qualify this as a traditional business, not a technology startup. We are looking for volunteers to start another organization in parallel to the Startup Council and to help the traditional businesses. I had a meeting last night with one of the, the, the chairperson of a, of a mosque here at MAPS in Seattle area. I don't know if anybody's familiar. And I proposed to them that they start similar organization uh, as the Startup Council, but for traditional businesses. And if you think about it, the only difference between that organization and our organization is the technology aspect. And we will provide them all the support they need uh, to get started for, for guidance and transition into technology and all. There's a huge opportunity for the community. But because of our limited resources, we have made an, a decision to stay focused on technology and help only the technology startups. But if anybody wants to step up and take a role in that, we will be right behind you and will support you in, in every possible way. So do you recommend any any organization where this brother co go and kind of asking for help? I don't know that the map Seattle is one they are looking into that and I have heard okay. there are organizations in Chicago. Uh, okay. I forgot the name of that for, on the top of my head but there are a couple of organizations in, in Chicago I know and, and, and they can go to map Seattle also. Sure, sure, yes, sure. Brother, uh, 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 right. Last week I was in Washington D.C. and I met uh, with the uh, CEO for uh, Chief Operating Officer of La Riba Bank. So, brother, check out with them. Uh, see if they have any options for businesses to fund your uh, uh, your brother or your business. And if you want, I can kind of uh, introduce you to them. Inshallah, uh, my email address is pretty straightforward, or you can send an email to the whole team as well. That's fine. But I can introduce you to him, and we, you can talk directly to him and ask him what are his options. Okay. So, inshallah, if that works out, I'll be more than happy. And then you know, uh, if that works out. So, does that answer your question, brother? Hussain? Yes, brother. Jazakallah. Khaira. Inshallah. Yeah. I'll, I'll introduce you to him. Uh, I know him and he, um, I met him a couple of times. He lives in the next city where I live here in LA. Uh, so, inshallah, I'll introduce you to him. They have, I mean, Lariba is pretty uh, big here in California. So, I'll just introduce you to him and see how it goes, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for calling in. But, inshallah, as you see, we have a necessity for this. So Adnan Bhai, we should definitely take some step on this one to help our brothers who are working or starting up on uh, traditional businesses, inshallah. So uh, we are almost there. Uh, the time is almost up. We have two minutes left. Uh, Brother Adnan, can you quickly take this question from Brother Imam, Imad Farooq in the chat box? Thank you for doing our <clears throat> 
So, right, I, I think that if you want to join a uh, volunteer with the Startup Council, please uh, sign up at the website. That's great. Uh, actually, uh, the, Brother Imad, uh, your question about how can a Startup Council help in the small businesses, I think my longer vision is uh, the, the arm that we are talking about is helping the traditional businesses. There are other reasons for those small businesses uh, in the community to struggle. If you can help them with the, with the accounting system, with help them with, the, with mentorship, with the marketing, uh, organizing their business, that's one aspect of it. But the second is going to be the transition into technology. So those businesses, we can pipe into them, and I think that's where you are coming, IT consulting, that we help them transition from the traditional mom-pop shops into a technology business. And uh, I think people, those who are entrenched and are involved in the businesses, they are the subject matter experts. They can identify the opportunities. And once they identify the opportunity, come to us, and we will help you convert that into the technology. I, I hope that answers your question. Great. Good. Very good question. Very good question. Thank you. Sorry, I was speaking on mute. So, Adnan Bhai, I was saying that anyways, uh, Brother uh, Imad can also reach out to us for any kind of mentorship uh, for his business, inshallah. So we can at least, you know, guide him. Uh, we, I think we have some brothers who are working in this IT consulting space. We can kind of uh, connect them together so he can take some feedback from them as well. So Jazakallah khair, Brother Imad, for your questions, inshallah. Feel free to spread the word about uh, Startup Council. Uh, we are almost uh, at the end of the time. If you are, uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach us out, uh, send an email to startup at almpg.com or give us a call or uh, visit our website, submit your idea. And this is your Brother Dawood Ahmad with the whole team of Startup Council and ALMPG team. I am very glad that we did this session. Alhamdulillah, we could change the mindset of one single individual through this webinar. I, uh, I think my job is done here for this day. Alhamdulillah. Can I, so can I plug in? Please, go ahead. Please, please. I would encourage all of you, there are 30, 40 members on, online, to go on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, find the Startup Council. We are uh, honoring one Muslim entrepreneur each week. Please go take a look at it, learn from it, like it, share it, and follow it. It will be very, very Jazakallah. helpful. And ask your community members to do the same. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. So I should add that to my uh, ending notes as well, inshallah, for our next webinar. Inshallah, I'll come up with something else in the next webinar, inshallah, maybe in a few weeks. Uh, I want to end this session with a dua. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr inna al-insana la fi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amila salihati wa tabasaw bil haqqi wa tabasaw bil sabr. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair everybody once again for attending. Assalamu alaykum.